The Scientific Method by Maddie J. And Kenna Gibson, Biology Pre-AP, Mr. Bro's Third Period, Bowling High School. Hey, Maddie, can you pass me that marker? Huh? Can you pass me that marker? What? I said, can you pass me that marker? God, I hate wearing these masks. Oh, yeah, I know. They're so hot, and I can never understand anyone. I'm pretty sure they're bad for my health. Huh? I said, I'm pretty sure they're bad for my health. Scientific method, step one, state the problem or question. Are people breathing in more bacteria by wearing masks? Step two, create a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess or answer to your question. We researched our problem in order to make our hypothesis. Here are some of the resources we used. Our first source is an internet article titled, Your Mask May Be Causing Candida Growth in Your Mouth by Jessica Magala. According to the National Institutes of Health, your mouth has 700 species of microbes living in there. There is both good and bad bacteria, plus fungus, which can lead to a ton of problems. Our next source is from Medical News Today titled, COVID-19 and Face Mask, To Wear or Not to Wear, by Yella Hewings Martin, Ph.D. According to the World Health Organization, masks can be a source of infection for the person wearing them. There has also been studies showing that self-contamination was common, even amongst healthcare professionals. Our final source is an internet article written by Joelle Poole. Can cloth face masks get you sick? Experts say masks can allow bacteria to accumulate, which can make you sick. This information helped us form the following hypothesis. There is more bacteria buildup on the inside of our masks than on the outside of our masks. Scientific method, step three. Once you come up with your hypothesis, you need to conduct an experiment. Your experiment will test your hypothesis. First, we gathered the following materials. Seven brand new clean disposable face masks, 14 pre-poured agar plates, 14 sterile cotton swabs, six Ziploc bags, markers for labeling, and six different people slash test subjects. Next, we carefully place each clean individual mask in a separate Ziploc bag, individually labeled for each test subject. We made sure we did not touch the mask surface. Then, we established a set of guidelines for which the experiment would be conducted, and we explained those guidelines to each test subject. All experiments have variables. There are independent and dependent variables. The dependent variables depend on the independent variable. The independent variables are the people wearing the masks. We used our school principal, our biology teacher, two male students, and ourselves, two female students. Dependent variables. The dependent variables depend on the independent variables. Our dependent variables were the bacteria buildup on the inside and outside of each mask, which depended on who was wearing the mask. Here were our experiment guidelines. Begin wearing your mask at 8 o'clock. You can carefully take your mask off at lunch to eat for 30 minutes. Be careful not to contaminate your mask while it is off. Immediately put your mask on after you eat. Remove your mask at 315 and carefully place it back in the Ziploc bag and return the bag to Maddie J or Kenna Gibson at 315. This is your mask that you have to wear, you have to put on at 8 o'clock. Okay. And then you take it off for like 30 minutes at lunch and then you take it off at, put it back on after lunch and then you take it off at 315 and put it back in this bag. We're, what time is it? 9.38. It's currently 9.38. We're headed to biology. Um, how do you feel about your mask, Maddie? I feel like all the bacteria is growing this onto mask, my face. This and it's mask gross. sucks. It's disgusting. Okay, we're about to take our masks off for lunch. I set a timer for Ready? 30 minutes. Three, set. two, one. Oh, my yes. God. And we're my free. My face is, like, wet and oily.
gross. Okay, we got close it and hold in the bacteria now. Okay, just put our mask back on. We waited 30 minutes during lunchtime. And now we're back to not breathing. And we'll, Condensation. And we have a test. And I might hyperventilate with wearing this mask. I might pass out, so. This is a mask felt wearing it the entire day. It's actually felt better than my gator. I, ain't, I don't feel as fidgety. Do you feel, do you think there's bacteria growing on the inside? Yes, I do worry about that. Okay. Once we collected all the masks, we had to establish a control group. Next, we swabbed a clean, unused mask and a clean agar dish to establish our control group, which is what we use to compare the amount of bacterial growth on the other agar dishes. Now, we are swabbing a clean mask for our control group. swabbed the clean mask for our control group, we labeled 12 new agar plates with an IS for inside of mask and an OS for the outside of the masks. Then one at a time, we carefully removed each mask from the bag and swabbed the inside with a sterile cotton swab and then swabbed the agar plates. Then with a different swab and plate, we swabbed the outside of the mask and plates. We repeat this process until each mask has been swabbed and each agar plate has been swabbed. These are all the masks we collected today and now we're going to label each petri dish inside and outside. So now we labeled all of our petri dishes to correspond with our masks. So now we're going to take our little cotton tip applicators and swab the inside and outside of the mask and put it in the petri dish. We are swabbing the outside of the, the mask with the cotton swabs and then we're going to put it into the corresponding petri dishes that say outside with the same number and then we're going to swab around inside the petri dish with the cotton swab and do the same for the inside. Next, we place our agar plates in a temperature-controlled environment at 80 degrees for optimal bacterial growth. We took photos 24 hours later and a week later before measuring the bacteria. Now we're going to take all of our petri dishes to our little sitting area, the shop, and we're going to we're going to keep it there for the next couple weeks in a controlled temperature, temperature to try to grow this bacteria. Between 70 and 100 degrees is the temperature that the bacteria will grow best. Uh, we're going to keep these petri dishes here for the next couple of days so that they can grow the bacteria. And we're going to take pictures every day to keep you all updated on how much grows. And at the end, we will post our results on if wearing a mask is really good for you or not. Now we're going to go look at the masks that we put in the shop yesterday to see if any bacteria has grown in our petri dishes. Let's go. Okay, now we're back in the shop and we have to, we're going to show y'all what our petri dishes look like after day one. They're already full of bacteria. Look at all that bacteria.
day seven. Scientific method step four, observe and record your data. In order to determine how much bacteria is on the inside and outside of the mask, we will use the direct counting method. First, we will divide each agar dish into eight equal slices. Then we will count the bacteria cells, or each dot, in one slice. Next, we will multiply that cell count times eight, then divide by the dish volume, which was found on the box of the agar dishes, to get the approximate cell concentration. We will repeat this process for each separate dish. How to count the bacteria cell colonies. The method we will use is called the direct count method. We will divide each petri dish into eight slices, count the cells in one slice, and use that to estimate the cell concentration. Scientific method step 5. Analyze your data. To help analyze your data, we created the following graph. This table of data shows the diameter of each dish converted into inches, the thickness of each plate converted into inches, the volume of each dish, the sample cell count, which is what we actually counted in our video, and the last column is the total cell concentration, which is the cell count times 8 divided by the volume. With this table, we were able to create the bar graph. Each colored bar represents a different test subject. The column on the left shows the inside of the mask cell concentration, and the bar on the right shows the cell concentration on the outside of the mask, with the exception of the yellow column, test subject number 2. All of the other masks show higher levels of bacterial concentration on the inside of the masks. Scientific Method Step 6. Draw a Conclusion As you can see from the data analysis and graph, our hypothesis was correct. There is more bacteria buildup on the inside of our masks than on the outside of our masks. What is really gross is the amount of bacteria combined on both sides of our masks. The bottom line is wearing masks are clearly bad for the health of a well person. The amount of bacteria that we are breathing in is more concentrated with every breath we are taking than if we just were able to breathe in fresh air. It is absolutely disgusting to see the amount of bacteria we are breathing in. Uh, hey, what's, hey up, what's up? So, we just finished that experiment and I was actually thinking about it and we had a couple of errors that we could have fixed. Like what? Well, for starters, we probably shouldn't have touched the outside of our masks during lunch because mm -hmm. that got some bacteria from things not in the air like our phones and the doorknobs we touched on the mask and that's not what we were experimenting so yeah. we could have changed that yeah, and I also think that when we put the mask in the bag we would be cross contaminating the germs from the inside to the outside of the mask so we could have probably not have done that so I'm thinking the next time we do this experiment we should probably fix those errors so we can have more accurate results yeah Maddie, stop! Wait, what did I hit? Did I hit something? No, I was just thinking about our science experiment that oh we gosh, were doing. I thought I hit something. And, you know, I was thinking that if we did it again, we should probably do make some improvements, you know? Do you think you have any ideas? Yeah, I think our improvement should be that next time when we do it that we should have different type of mask and use a different kind each week to see which one prevents bacteria from coming in as much that's a good idea do you have anything that we should do in the future to help better our results yes what let's see i was thinking about in the future what we could do and we could take different test subjects like we could get some older 
people like in a nursing home and some younger people, maybe like elementary school kids or maybe some doctors some, that wear masks every day. And some people with health issues And too. some people with health issues and just get a wider variety of people and have them wear masks and we swab their masks to see if we have any different results. Now keep your eyes on the road yeah. before we get in a wreck.